A lot of people have the misconception that millionaires are flashy consumers who buy luxury products and spend their money frivolously. However, this is a common misconception. People think most wealthy people lead glamorous lives, wear expensive sunglasses, and own many luxury vehicles. On the other hand, the average millionaire lives a relatively modest existence in a middle-class suburb. Perhaps they live next door to you. If you check out the book, The Millionaire Next Door, The Surprising Secrets of America's Wealthy, Thomas Stanley and William Danko refute common misconceptions about the lives of the wealthy and paint a nuisance and often startling portrayal of the typical American affluent family, which we will talk about in this video today. Welcome to Lux Live, and when it comes to luxury and lifestyle, we've got you covered. But before we begin, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Now, let's begin! Maintain a low standard of living relative to your income. Set aside money consistently and strategically put it to work for you. As the book title suggests, the typical millionaire does not own a home in Beverly Hills or a house in Park Lane. According to Harvard, educated mathematician John Robin, over half of America's millionaires do not reside in affluent communities. They don't inhabit posh mansions, but rather humble abodes in middle-class communities. To achieve financial independence, it is important to maintain a standard of living below what you earn. Putting money into the stock market and expensive real estate is only part of the equation. They found that of the millionaires they studied, just about 30% had money invested in the stock market. Rather than putting money into stocks and real estate, they want to keep their portfolio small and under their own management. Keep your money in the bank instead of spending it away. All the case studies recommend focusing on self-sufficiency rather than flaunting one's wealth. The goal is financial independence, not flaunting it with flashy purchases. By taking this course of action, we will be able to maintain our current standard of living into the foreseeable future, even if we experience an unexpected crisis or are forced to take a job that pays significantly less. People can be categorized into two types those who are careless with our finances, and those who make an effort to save and grow their fortune. The first is the extraordinary savers and investors who appear everywhere. The other group consists of people who fail to accumulate sufficient wealth. Tremendous gain of wealth requires discipline, time management, budgeting, and frugality. It's income versus wealth. It's important to remember that income is what you take in and wealth is what you have accumulated. We need to consider our wealth by considering demographics like age and income level. By doing so, we can gauge if our financial situation is healthy. Let's take an example of a doctor who is 60 years old and makes $560,000 a year. He has a net worth of $1.1 million. We might think he's rich, but his net worth should be more, given his age and income level. On the other hand, a police officer who is 40 years old and whose wife is a secretary makes a total of $50,000 a year. They don't spend much, carefully save, invest wisely, and have a net worth of $460,000. This means they are wealthier than the doctor in the sample situation. The most important thing to remember is that if your net worth is larger than your income and age group, you're doing well as a wealth builder and you are on your way to becoming wealthy. The next door millionaire is financially responsible and plans ahead. Those on track to becoming millionaires next door spend less time fretting about their current situation and more time making sound financial choices. They focus on the end objective and think in the long term. When it comes to automobiles, for instance, most people do not drive the most recent luxury models. They instead take their time looking for a used vehicle that has been well maintained over its lifetime. Their objective is not to indulge in frivolous spending and to amass a collection of material belongings. Rather, it is to reach a point where they are financially independent. They want to retire without worrying about money, so they may relax and enjoy life. In addition, they keep themselves motivated by imagining the benefits that will accrue to them in the long run once they have achieved financial independence. The next door millionaire sees business prospects and makes an appropriate professional decision. Self-made millionaires make up 80% of the self-employed workforce. Their companies frequently offer products and services that are essential. As a result, they are not as vulnerable to severe economic downturns. Although the work could appear monotonous, the pay and guaranteed continued employment are frequently substantial incentives. 
However, this does not imply that to amass a fortune, he must be the type of person who is naturally enterprising. The selection of a profession in which the individual's abilities and services are in demand was a theme that repeatedly emerged in the many interviews conducted with self-made billionaires. Most of the time, the millionaire next door doesn't spend money in economic outpatient care. Millionaires are careful about how much cash they give their children. The annual average present given by wealthy Americans to their grandchildren or children is at least $15,000. This may seem like excellent parenting, but they tend to foster dependency. The objective is to prevent economic outpatient care because it compromises your and your child's financial independence. These gifts and handouts frequently stimulate additional expenditure to maintain their high-status lifestyle. Additionally, children frequently feel entitled to their parents' wealth. Successful children from wealthy families do not receive cash presents from their parents. In addition, their parents have taught them the need for frugality, discipline, and independence. The objective is to teach your children how to invest and spend responsibly. Managing money and understanding the economy are both made easier with the help of the resources and guidance provided in this book. The writers use many case studies and extensive research to show the commonalities most millionaires share. The takeaway is that we can all improve our financial situations by incorporating some of these lessons and principles into the way we respond to money and how we spend it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button, click subscribe and hit the notification bell to receive updates in our latest videos. Also, feel free to leave us a comment. If you want to watch more videos, head on over to our channel to see more from Lux Live. See you!